Hi, it's Midnight Mule and today I thought I would respond live on camera to some of the comments on my videos, the comments you've been leaving. So I do read all the comments. It's just that it's sometimes months before I get around to reading them because I'm such a bad person. So I'm sure some YouTubers really don't read the comments. They say, I'll leave the comments. I love reading them all. And you look at the thousands they get and it's like, yeah, you don't. <laughs> you really don't read them. But what I like on YouTube videos is if there's a video I like or there's somebody I like following, I will scroll through the comments and see what people are saying. And sometimes that's more interesting for me than the video itself, especially the various finance videos I like to watch. So I do read all the comments that get left, but it can be months and months before I get around to reading them. Some are quite benign and don't really need a response. They're just a comment, but other ones, there might be a question. So I will then respond live on camera and we see how it goes. So there should be lots of editing in this because I'm sure not all the comments uh, will require me to say much. And <laughs> that wasn't a nice thing to say. I didn't mean it like that. So this is from the autistic burnout video. So that was an interesting video for me because it really knocked me for six. Just my brain completely shutting down and it is just bizarre. It, it was it was really weird. I'm, I'm much better now. I know I'm not completely how I used to be. And I do try to be very careful because I could easily slip back into that. And my brain just shuts down. OK, Benny Hill said, check out mental symptoms of low testosterone and don't listen to NHS doctors regard regarding OK levels. You may be surprised. So I think I did look into the uh, testosterone levels and that was quite interesting. Things that could cause lower testosterone and the effects of it. I don't actually remember what it was that I looked at now and what the results were, but thanks for that comment. I, that that was interesting. That was that was relevant, and I did look at it. Autistic burnout. Kim M. Thank you for sharing. It was really interesting to hear your experience of burnout. And she's quoted, "To protect my brain from me is a good way of explaining what happens." Yeah, I think it's sometimes uh, my <laughs> your body can definitely shut down and try and protect you from you, especially if you're an Aspie. I think. Maybe more so if you're a guy. Maybe guys in general can do stupid things. Video. Okay, here's the video. Humor and Asperger's video. Fiverr says it's something, not something. So I guess that's probably not about spelling. That would be to do with the way I speak. I am from the south of England, so it's quite possible I said something and not something. There are plenty of words that I say differently to uh, certainly the people where I'm living now. So I live in Cheshire. And my A's sound different, so I would say words like draft and grass. And they might be more like draft and grass up here. Certainly my wife says the A's differently like that. Double L's in words sounds like W's for me. So whereas some people say hell's bells, I'd say hell's bells. So it's that's completely gone. Um, yeah. Things like somebody might say the word shower, and I'd say sha. It's just, so some words have fewer syllables, I guess, for me. You can have a bath or sha. Be like that where somebody might say bath or shower but on the videos i try and speak a little bit more clearly um yeah i i think accents are great there i'm fascinated by the way people speak it's great okay the uh memory and asperger's syndrome mark cray says can relate to this autistic burnout wf slim says how would you translate having a paddy into english I thought that was English. <laughs> I'm guessing that means to throw a tantrum. Yes, that would be exactly it. Throwing a tantrum, having a paddy, that would be the same thing. So WF Slim is, um, I think he's Canadian. As another comment on autistic burnout from WF Slim. I'm really connected with you when you talk about shutdowns. Okay, Humor H, great YouTube name says i tend to laugh and get the joke before everyone else does yeah it's a strange thing that with the humor the way someone's telling a joke and then if i reach the punchline before then i tend not to laugh so the really funny jokes are the jokes where i didn't see the punchline coming and slapstick on television slapstick humor and slapstick in real life i can really belly laugh at some of that stuff so the film dodgeball I've watched that several times and i laugh so much at that it's just so ridiculous Okay, Asperger's and tummy ache. CB Snow says, guess I better lay off the milk then. It's not the same as the stuff that came in bottles in the 70s, though. The modern milk production process is horrifying. Love the video. Regards from Aspie Engine is Cape Town. 
<laughs> All right, thanks, E.B. Snow. Yeah, I've I've no idea if the milk's different now to how it was back in the seventies. When I was first at school, we used to get, I think it was a third of a pint of a milk at break time with a little straw you'd punch in there, and then that got stopped. And that was Margaret Thatcher apparently stopped that, so she was called Thatcher the Milk Snatcher. A uh, little bit of trivia. I'm sure a good number of you have heard of Margaret Thatcher. Another one on humour, the humour video. CB Snow, I love jokes. Other people hate my jokes. <laughs> it's funny, people are sometimes at work or other times, I will say something and they will laugh, but it's a laugh of embarrassment and they're followed with, you can't say that. And yet what I say is true and they find it funny, but it's like, you can't say that. Okay, MBTI and Asperger's syndrome. CB Snow says, are you all dark blue green eagle owls? Fascinating correlation. Nice analysis. Kind regards from Aspie Engineers Cape Town. Well, thank you, Aspie Engineer from Cape Town. That's, that's good stuff. Asperger's syndrome and employment. This is an employment one. Maybe I should be wearing my jacket for this. Hang on. See if I can find one. Alrighty, look, I've got a, got a jacket on now. I'm not sure you can really get away with a purple t-shirt and a, this jacket, but hey, maybe I could work in Miami or something back in the 80s. Right, so Asperger's syndrome and employment. See, the thing with, something that gets me about work and uh, not just work, lots of things in life, but with neurotypicals, the way somebody looks is really important to them. And I think maybe in work, subconsciously, if somebody dresses smart, they're more likely to conform to what you want them to do. They're more likely to be a yes person. And it's just ridiculous. I think, uh, for me, I think clothes should be comfortable. And I think for the vast majority of people, so we can just say everyone, I would rather their bodies were covered up. So I think a big part of wearing clothes is about decency and not being a distraction to other people. So I, I can see it's not good to wear offensive clothes. So certain logos or slogans could be offensive. Political things, okay, you could upset someone, maybe avoid those. But I think we should be able to just accept people need to be comfortable in clothes. But anyway, I've put this on because I'm talking now about Asperger syndrome and employment. CB Snow again, similar to so many stories in yours. So similar to so many stories in yours. Thanks for sharing this, Aspie Engineer. Backup Power and Water Supplies, Cape Down. I don't know if Backup Power and Water Supplies is a suggestion there, but there we go. Oh, this one's not work. I will, I'll leave this on for now. Okay, MBTI and Asperger's Syndrome. I'm trying to understand our cognitive functions better. This is from the V word. Right now, analyzing INTJs and ISTJs. Dealing with some physical health issues too, so writing is not easy. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to write this. I can send you my conclusions. I want to test their validity, my understanding, so it's more verbal. As always, feel free to comment, critique anything. Ooh, okay. And they've left, this is very naughty of me. So this was left seven months ago, and I'm only looking at it now. And they've written lots of stuff on this comment. So I'm gonna have to get back to you, V-Word, on this one. I will look at this and read it, and I will comment. Thank you very much. And they've even posted two videos. So that's nice. You can watch my two videos to understand my reasoning better. My unusual pairing. Okay. Well, thank you, V-Word. I will certainly be looking at that. I give it a tick and I'll get back to that one. Autistic Burnout. Joseph C. Love your content. Hope you keep making videos. I'm sorry that I don't make more. I'm a very bad person. I think of things to make videos of and then I keep somehow subconsciously not actually getting around to it. And I'm going to take this off because it's a hot day today and I'm burning up here. Hang on. You see how decent I'm being? I'm keeping my t-shirt on even though it's hot. Okay then. Um, and Aspie talks about Asperger's syndrome and church. Okay, allow me to controvert. It's the user. Very insightful video. So for those that might not have seen this one, this is about the struggles I have as an Aspie with church and going to church. So... I like to read the Bible. I, I do read the Bible. I'm comfortable with what the Bible says about things. But from a sensory perception point of view, church and a lot of other settings with lots of people is incredibly challenging for me. So allow me to controvert. Left the comment. Very insightful video. I have a couple of thoughts about 
your mention of the literal interpretation of scripture. Have you ever looked into origins, reg, origins, I might be saying that wrong, the ways of interpreting scripture? Question mark. The answer is no, I don't think I've heard of that. He taught that all scripture, even the nuances and sub subtleties, could be interpreted in three ways, the literal interpretation, the moral and the spiritual. The implication is that the Bible has multiple layers of meaning in all of its texts. Where one person sees it one way, another might conceptualize it differently. You might be interested in reading a bit more about this. Yes, I might. I think there's, I can comfortably see that some of scripture is clearly on multiple levels. But then, personally, I think there could be a danger in trying to apply levels to every single verse in the Bible. Because something could just be straightforward narrative or a recollection of facts and you could possibly get yourself tied up in knots if you tried to find things that weren't there but I could be wrong it's just my personal opinion and I'm speaking from ignorance probably here a parent with Asperger's syndrome Diane Penny said thank you really appreciated your humor and honesty thank you for saying that I have thought about doing other parenting videos it is a strange thing what is weird is knowing now that I'm Aspie but when the kids were younger I didn't realize and that I absolutely would have done some things differently I think perhaps if I'd known I was Aspie but I just between me and you don't tell the kids but I think they're all Aspie as well <laughs> so that's probably made it a bit easier memory and Asperger's syndrome video Paul Marshall said and apologies for everyone's name that I'm saying wrong here it might be Marshall Mark Markel anyway Thanks. Your video helps a lot in understanding my kid's mind. Really helpful. Thank you. The reason I originally did these videos, because I was never going to get too many subscribers, I was kind of pitching it mostly at neurotypical people who have a close relationship with or a relative who's Aspie, so they can maybe try and understand an Aspie's worldview. But uh, any, so I, I don't know if you're Aspie or not. I'm guessing not because of your comment. But anyone who finds this helpful, that's great. That's that's really good. And Aspie talks about Asperger's syndrome and small talk. Don't we hate small talk as a general rule? Something from nothing wrote, I don't mind when people use small talk on me to start a conversation, like when a colleague will say, how's the family? And what have you been up to lately? As these things tend to spring into real conversation. However, I'm not capable of being the one to instigate the conversation in this way. And I absolutely despise small talk that is only there to break the silence between strangers. Yep, no, I can understand that. I think if I decide to talk to somebody, I I can quickly make some silly little comment about something. And uh, from their response, quickly gauge if there's a conversation there or not. Okay, and another autistic burnout, something from nothing. Sometimes I start to find tasks that are usually easy for me. I am awful at reading. My wife thinks I might be a bit dyslexic and I think that's possible. <laughs> Certainly my, my spelling would suggest I'm a bit dyslexic. Sorry, autistic burnout, something from nothing. So I'm sorry about my reading's not so good. Sometimes I start to find tasks that are usually easy for me, extremely hard or impossible. And when that happens, I become extremely frustrated and often have a small meltdown as a result. And my wife is usually flabbergasted by why I'm finding something hard to do and why I appear to have a tantrum over such a small thing. Yeah, I I get that. I understand that. There are really basic tasks like my wife and I will be we'll often watch telly eating when we eat our dinner. The reason for that is I can't stand the sound of people eating. So I need a noise so I don't hear the eating sound going on anyway often at the end of the program i'll pass her the remote control so that she can pause the program and stop it because i'm thinking about the program or thinking about something else and it'll take me a while to think what buttons i'm pressing so it's much easier if she just does that which is crazy if you think the things that i can do there's such a big difference um right facebook line this video something from nothing i like it when people binge watch their videos that's what I do I find someone on YouTube find them interesting and I just binge watch their videos every few days and I'll often subscribe and then when they do a new video I'll watch it so I'm subscribed to loads of people on YouTube but yeah binge watching is great and I see that in the comments the order they're coming in so something from nothing talking about face blindness 
I work in the supermarket, and when a customer asks me to go to check a price, <laughs> I know where this is going. This is really funny. <laughs> I work in the supermarket, and when a customer asks me to go check a price or if something is out of stock, I always come back out and have already forgotten what the person I was talking to looks like. <laughs> I don't know if this is face blindness or because I don't look people in the eye when they talk so I don't look at their face long enough to notice what they look like it makes me feel like an idiot every time it happens though yeah <laughs> that is really funny thanks for sharing that I don't know what I would do I would I guess if it was me in that situation and I knew it happened I'd look at the person I think red dress black shoes red dress black shoes check the prices is it? and I come back look for red dress black shoes and if there's more than one person with red dress black shoes then I'm in trouble um <laughs> yeah thanks for that okay this video is about I did a video on being boring I did that outside I still got my hat here let me just get the video see if that <sighs> had this hat for years it's great it's comfortable and it keeps the sun off oh da, da, da. yep here we go here we go so being boring something from nothing is the author if i want the lottery and didn't it must be one if i won the lottery and didn't have to work for a living anymore it would be my dream to just move to the middle of nowhere in the countryside but also near the coast so i could just spend every single day walking around in nature or along a quiet beach where i wouldn't have to see anyone else other than my dogs I don't think I'd ever get bored of that sort of lifestyle I absolutely agree apart from the dogs part I'm not a dog person I like cats and it's interesting how most people certainly in this country seem to be dogs or cats a few are both and some are neither but yeah I'm, I'm more of a cat person I think cats seem more autistic than dogs they're just very self-reliant they make their intentions clear. If they don't want to be near you, they go away. If they want something, they come and annoy you. They're great cats. So yeah, I've got nothing. I'm not frightened of dogs. I don't mind dogs. They just seem an awful lot of effort to me. Like with a dog, you're committed to go out for a walk every day. But if there's a day you don't want to go out, it's like you don't have to. If you've got a cat, just open the catch flap, cat flap. Autistic burnout, CGA. Thanks so much for sharing. If you can make another video about this, it'd be great. And how to get out of it. Yeah, that would be tough because autistic burnout, I think all you can do really is, well, I can't say. I mean, it'd be different for different people. For me, it you, I just had to have an awful lot of time and try really hard not to push myself. And as soon as I felt myself completely losing it again, as in not aware of things, just stop what I'm doing. So I actually binge watched a few films that, well, like nice, simple things to watch that helped me going for walks. And I just had to let my brain reset. So, um, yeah, there's quite a few videos I could make and I probably should make. Health Thoughts of an Aspie. And this is from Artful Aspie, wrote this. Thanks for your video. I hate hospitals so much because of the pain, the bullying and smell that I refuse to go into them, even for some serious illness. I insisted on a day surgery for cancer because I hate medi medicos. I don't know what that is. They weren't happy. I was miserable, but my anger got me through. I have had my vaccinations, including a booster. Walking is the best thing for weight loss and deciding not to eat rubbish. Yeah, I, I think, in my opinion, certainly what you, what I eat, has a much bigger effect on my health and my weight than the amount of exercise I do and I should really eat an awful lot more healthy than I do and I should do more exercise but I do try and walk a couple of times a week only a mile or two actually finding a good MD these days is hard yeah I think so trust is everything sure. I struggle with hospitals I struggle with dentists I've had a lot of dental work in my time and I went to the dentist I think it was last week I really don't like going to the dentist it's um I'm sure he's a very good dentist and no reason to think he's not, but I really don't enjoy the experience. But at least I'm open there and I say, look, I must be, I struggle with this, that and the other. And they're very nice to me. So that's okay. Asperger's and tummy ache video. S Sting says your doc doesn't get kickbacks for putting you on meds in the US maybe, but absolutely not a thing in the NHS. Okay, that's interesting. I think 
that is the case and I'm pretty sure I've spoken to some doctors in the past that were friends and maybe not kick back for meds but for other things like referring you to a radiographer and stuff things like that anyone in the NHS with experience please leave a comment either on this or the tummy ache video regarding whether you think kickbacks happen or not but with the vaccine rollout recently there was um there was a, a doctor I think it's a doctor from Nantwich or somewhere close by who was on the BBC sometime talking about it, but they absolutely were getting paid extra for each vaccine they gave. And so that is one of the reasons there's such a big push. All the surgeries are pushing out so many vaccines because they're getting extra money for it. Not saying there's anything wrong with them getting paid to do this thing that was very important, wanting to get it done. Um, but obviously it meant they had to cancel a lot of other things because there wasn't immediate money and they need the money so i'm i'm not against people getting paid to do their job i was it was just common knowledge at the time that there were for every vaccine they did in this country the uk presumably other countries as well i can't say for sure there was um they were getting paid extra for it and that might be the case in all it probably is with the flu season every year you can get a flu shot if you're above a certain age and the practice will get, I don't know how many pounds, 10, 15 pound per flu shot they give. That would just be standard practice. A parent with Asperger's syndrome, Isola King, I think is the name. Thank you. This video was insightful. Okay, well, thank you for saying that. And Aspie talks about church again. I don't even know why I was so specific, but today my mind has been filled with knowledge and I think I may be an Aspie too. Thank you for your channel. It's very insightful and I can really relate. Okay, yep, thank you. I personally think, now that I've looked obviously into Asperger's when I am Aspie, I think there's a lot more Aspies out there than people realise and that they realise. But I also know I'm a very bad judge of character and I misinterpret people and i could be completely wrong on that and i think if if you have an aspie two parents one aspies one's neurotypical i think there's more chance of the kids being aspie than neurotypical and there if that was the case this is just from my observation then obviously the population would gradually become more and more aspie percentage wise vectus okay this is asperger syndrome and employment i should be wearing the jacket again at least this is a comfortable jacket. It's just it's just a hot day. So Victor Sympathisant. Vector Sympath I'm saying the name wrong. I'm sorry about that. Has left a big long comment. This is an interesting story. I'm twenty eight Asperger's and ad diag and was diagnosed recently, I guess that says. So I think he said Basically, I'm really good in math and can speak English fluently, learned Latin and Old Greek and translated some of the old authors. It was a lot of fun and both languages are so interesting. I am awful at language. It was my <laughs> weakest subject at school. I wasn't great at PE. I was fast. My hand-eye coordination was bad, but oh, languages I really struggle with. So when someone's good at language, I, I think that's so impressive. And if someone can sing in tune, because I can't, someone's got a good singing voice. I'm very impressed by that. Um, I've no idea how to study. I just know how to do things my way. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I I see that when I, I know that I study and I work different to what's normally expected. I've still got my hat on. You wouldn't probably wear a hat like that in, in a suit. It probably didn't go, did it? I can't see my camera. Let me see how crazy that looks. Yeah, it doesn't really work, does it? Even I can see that's not quite right. Ah, I hope you like my butterfly. There it is. <laughs> Whee! It's a butterfly. My sister painted that. It's nice, isn't it? I get distracted. I sometimes think it might be ADHD as well. I'm not sure. There are certain things about me I think that's ADHD and other things like I can't be ADHD because I do this. But I do get distracted very easily. Now, MBTI okay. and Asperger syndrome. Rachel... Gerard said the test measures only affect, therefore it is not logical. If you break the logic of MT MBTI test down, it goes as follows. Most X personality types display Y traits. Therefore, if one exhibits Y traits, one must be X personality type. 
Yep, I agree with that. The same logic can be abstracted to if some x is y, all y is x. Or if some animals are furry, all things that are furry must be animals. You can see that this is an untrue statement. Therefore, MBTI tests are not logically sound and therefore inaccurate. I agree to an extent. I agree MBTI are not accurate. I agree it's massively flawed. I agree it can lead to... I don't need to be wearing this anymore because I'm not in the office. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. Right. Cast aside on the floor like it doesn't matter. I agree with the MBTI statements there. But the thing is, for me, without the MBTI, without knowing somebody's personality type, everyone is one type of person. So it helps me because if I know somebody's a certain type, I can interact with them better, even though it's flawed, even though I could be wrong. So ignoring MBTI, if you take a typical boy, typical girl, male, female, I will act, I will tread a lot more carefully around girls than I will boys on average because I'm aware that it's easier for me to offend a girl than it is for me to offend a boy, basically. So I'm I'm really, really careful. I still get things wrong, but I'm really careful. So but if, going back to the MBTI, if I know somebody's extroverted, I will be slightly different to if they're introverted. It's not me being insincere. It's me trying to accommodate my understanding of the way they are. Okay. Um, and Aspie talks about small talk. Planet Ash RE says, oh my Lord, you nailed it. I used to get absolutely bonkers about what, why they do that. Yeah, I agree. Ah, oh, small talk. <laughs> it does in my head and it really does. Uh, MBTI, another MB MBTI comment. D Sparrow. I am an INFPA. I have only recently gone into Asperger's and ASD. MBTI may be archaic in comparison to modern practice but I need a soft introduction to psychology and MBTI set me on the right path. Yeah, I think MBTI is like the Bohr's model of the atom. It's not, but it is in as much as... So with chemistry O level, we learned the Bohr's model of the atom where you had the... I might have this wrong now, but you had the electrons and the neutrons in the middle and then you had the... You had the protons and neutrons in the middle and you had the electrons in the shells on the outside and according to how many electrons in each ring, each element, blah, blah, blah. So we were taught all that with the... I think we had to memorize the first 20 elements in the uh, periodic table. And when we learned that, our chemistry teacher said, and we know this is wrong. This is not how the atom is made, but it's good enough to get through the exams and to help you understand what happens. So I don't remember now we had, was it covalent bonds and ionic bonds and all this sort of stuff. So the Bohr's model of the atom is wrong, but it helps you understand things. MBTI is incorrect, but it helps me understand things. So that's kind of good enough for me. There's lots of things in life are like that. It's it's an approximation. I remember <laughs> physics. This is I found this amusing. Something to do with electronics, something rather. I don't remember what it was. There's an infinitely long bit of wire, and the teacher said, "But we don't have an infinitely long piece of wire, so we're going to use this meter length, and that'll do for an approximation." So <laughs> a meter is a long way from infinite. So all through life, we constantly use approximations. We use models in things. Some models are awful. Just look at, um, there are scientist models that are used in the government on the media. And they said, oh, scientific model shows blah, blah, blah. And when you've been around long enough, you know, garbage in, garbage out. And so there are a lot of scientific models I hear about. And I think Joe Public believe them or think they're plausible and from experiencing because I understand first things to do with maths and modeling I think oh, that's just ridiculous you can you can get a set of data and then project it out and get whatever result you want and justify it by taking certain assumptions so yeah MBTI you shouldn't build your life on MBTI I, I don't think you should build your life on MBTI incredibly useful tool for an Aspie though I would say okay this one's about employment jacket i'm glad i didn't do a video on the beach don't have to anyway i'm sure you're glad i didn't do a video on the beach as well so this one's about employment this is from zimina radiendo apologies for saying the name wrong i have asperger's syndrome all my life i am a motion graphics designer that must be great fun i wish i was good at art i really struggle in social settings i just hide away and get so stressed out with heart palpitations one minute in a social setting feels like one year in time. And then 
somebody whose name I'm not going to say, said, same with me, the social side of employment is the worst part and I'm yet to find a job where I can handle the social aspect. And then Zimna replied, great to have met you. Thank you. Keep in touch, buddy. All right. Okay, that's that's nice. Yeah, social situations can be tough. I think one of the things for me is I find a lot of so some elements of social social situations are fake, and you know the conversations are, the conversations are real. What's behind the conversation is fake. Just have a quick look. Right, there's not an employment one coming up soon. I'm taking this off again. It's a hot day. You know, I thought this would be a quick video. Oh, we're getting near the end. These these comments are now three, two months old. So if you've made it this far, well done. The way I watch YouTube videos, sometimes I, I nearly always do something else and I'm listening to what's being said. So I'm comfortable listening to videos that go on for 10, 20, 30 minutes, sometimes over an hour. That's fine because I'm listening and doing something else. So if you've made it this far, well done. I hope you're doing something useful at the same time. But I'm not telling you what to do. Do it if you like. I don't mean that either. <laughs> Some things are illegal or immoral. I hope you're having a nice time anyway. And I hope some of this, me just wittering on, is at least slightly interesting for some of you. So, health thoughts of an Aspie. This is from VYX Plays. It really did like. It really does look like your green screen. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I remember that shot. That was that was bizarre. There's something about the way the camera focuses, and it must approximate things in the background. I have thought about getting green screen. Um. I'm seriously considering doing a video series on the Fancy Premier League, which is something you get in the UK here. So there's loads of people do the FPL. There's loads of FPL creators. But I've got an idea that I think is going to be slightly different. Uh, and I know it would help some people that I know who do the FPL. So if you're interested in that, I will, if I remember and I get around to it, I'll eventually leave a link somewhere in one of these comments saying I'm doing it. But I do it on a separate channel because I'm sure there's loads of Aspies that don't care about the FPL. So it would be, it would still be Midnight Mule. If you look for Midnight Mule FPL and I get round to it, then you'll probably find my videos. But I want to make them short and just say, buy these players, sell those players. I really don't like Doctors or anything like that either. Enjoyed the commentary over the scenic shots. Very beautiful. Yeah, with this one, I didn't know in this video whether to sit at the desk here and rather on like I am, or if to go outside and be somewhere nice, print out the question, because they'd be too small on my phone to see, and do it on my phone. And I thought, for now, I'll do this. But I, I do like going out as well, and I should do some more videos outside, I think. Maybe I should throw in some random shots in this video, just so that's a bit more interesting. Thanks for your thoughts. I had this on the background while I was working, and it served well to alleviate some of the monotony. So cheers. Well, that was a good time in reading that comment. How many... I'd, I'm not just after comments, but I'll be interested. What do you do when you watch or listen to a YouTube video. So for myself, I will, for example, I might play a bit of Minecraft because a video in itself isn't enough. Or I might be working, if I'm working on something that's not, don't need to think too hard about, I'll have a video playing, just somebody talking about whatever it is. Uh, sometimes I might be tired, I might be lying in bed listening to it. Sometimes I'm in the bath listening to a video. Um, I don't do a lot of washing up, but if I did, I could see me listen to a video then. Yeah, I'd never, I said about Minecraft, I never just play Minecraft. It's just, I would do something, I might be doing something in Excel and listening to a video. But yeah, it's it's great. Some videos are for watching, but videos like this, you can just listen to. You don't miss out on anything apart from me putting a jacket on or off. Uh, MBTI, another MBTI one. I am an ISTJ Aspie. Yeah, that's, um, that seems quite, ISTJ and INTJ certainly seem very popular among Aspies. I think I read once as Aspies tend to be f only five of the 16. That was, I'm sure that's not quite true, but it's probably a pretty good approximation. All right, and Aspie talks about small talk. This is from Morton Franchard. Franchard. Morton Franchard. I have not been diagnosed yet, but I've talked to my doctor about my thought about me having Asperger's probably. Small talks is something I've struggled with. Oh, this is a long comment. Small talks is something I've struggled with for so long since I was at school in first grade. All these meaningless conversations, no importance or no new or interesting information. Yep, conversation should be about information, transfer of information. And I love you for saying that you can usually answer the question, how are you with I'm alive? Yeah, 
<laughs> so, so I do. <laughs> Something else I do, I've, I've been doing it the last year or two, is when somebody says, it's normally in the house, often the wife, occasionally one of the kids, why is that thing on the floor? Why is the why is this on the table? And I answer, gravity. So a lot of my questions, a lot of questions that get asked now, my answer is simply gravity. And I've done it so much that I sometimes say it when it's an absurd answer and gravity can't possibly be the answer. Like, um, I, why have you got fish fingers for dinner again? Gravity. It's like anything. Gravity is a great answer. It's like in Sunday school, a bit of a meme, but for kids, if a Sunday school teacher ask a question the answer is probably jesus so it's like that yeah gravity so um you might want to use that for now and if if your wife or mother or someone says why is this on the floor why is that on the table just say gravity okay uh, i do this all the time now because it's true good good for you i'm glad it was helpful make the recipient more than often smile and laugh which makes it easier to continue with the conversation Smiles often indicate that a person is positive to you. Something I've been trying to do more recently in conversation is smile and laugh if I think something could be funny or should be funny. Not a huge fake laugh, but just try and make the other person feel maybe a bit more comfortable. And I've observed that people that are smiley and laughy tend to be more popular, even if what they say is identical to what someone else says. Um, anyway, and I've over the years had to learn what all the little differences in detail just in a laugh or a smile means. Good, bad, dismissive, and so on, yeah. Something Aspies can do, I can do. Everyone can do this, but I think Aspies more than other. And that is laugh at the wrong time. <laughs> so we can, uh, I used to get sent out of lessons at school sometimes for laughing at things because what was said was so ridiculous. Um, so yeah, it's. but now I, I'm old enough to just think if, it, if I'm gonna laugh, I'm just gonna laugh. If someone gets offended, they can get offended. I found it funny. If I then decide I want a conversation, I've learned to form the conversation into a path towards a deeper one. Yep, some people don't like deep conversations and they're the sort of people I like to avoid um, because it's just not interesting for me. Obviously, there are exceptions to that. There'd be times you do need to converse with somebody even though it's not going to be a deep conversation. But I, something I've found is a lot of people like talking about themselves. So without prying too much, you can start a conversation, something they say, and then you talk about that. And people are very comfortable talking about themselves. So if you, if you don't know what to talk about, just try and get the conversation onto them. And then at the end, they will like you because they think they've had a meaningful conversation. And then at the end, they might know nothing about you. Like I said, I do read all the comments. And when I watch YouTube videos, I'll often read comments that people leave and they're very very interesting very good i like it when i see comments on my videos and someone else comments as a little chain of a conversation going and aspie talks about this is another church one i should have got a dog collar shouldn't i but never mind i have asperger's and do not struggle necessarily with religion but with the social part of congregating oh bible does say don't forsake the assembling of yourselves yes it does i know and that's really difficult but something else the bible also says is Jesus said, uh, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And for me, from experience, that's a big no-no as an Aspie because the way I want to be treated, if I treat other people that way, they don't like it. So it's it's really difficult. So I guess you have to understand what's behind the statement. Well, I thought maybe you would like to try another church. I've tried several churches. I said, brother, that is not the problem. I know this is a good church. I'm not trying to go to another, but the truth is I struggle everywhere. I literally have no friends. I only keep working because I have no because I have kids to raise and I even struggle with showing up to work. I don't go to church because it's too overwhelming. Yep, Andrew, I can I totally understand that. Fortunately there is there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, for example, and other websites to do with where people just get they just tape their sermon. Obviously, whatever your view is going to be on the bible you will find videos that you would consider heretical because it's completely not your understanding but there are, is some very good stuff online i think if i could find a church where you turn up to a sermon and then you have tea and coffee and talk about the sermon and go home that would be pretty much the perfect church for me the um that would be pretty good even if it's a 20 minute sermon or a two hour sermon i could handle that that'd be good 
Okay, another church one. This is from Jackie Rocks. Yay, another biblical aspie. I wish I could converse with you. You can. I have such a disconnect from trying to talking theology and church with others because of the aspie divide. And I can say that you literally related to me. You look very similar to my dad and brother and nephew. Thank you. I get maybe aspies look generic. I think I, in at least one of my videos, I think I've left a, a link to my Facebook. I don't go on Facebook very often, but I will, I will leave a Facebook link on this comment. And if you see the comment, then at least we can Facebook friends and we can connect that way. If you like, I'm perfectly happy to talk religion with anybody. Um, anyone who's interested, that is, of course. Just having a calm, logical conversation, trying to understand their viewpoint, that's fine. Okay, Jackie Rocks again. This is uh, to do with parenting. Awesome. You guys homeschool as well. And I think that's a clapping icon. I'm curious how your marriage goes with some Aspie challenges and how you guys have overcome the emotional differences. Me and my husband are only 32 and it's a large challenge for us. Yep, it's major challenges, I would say. Once I got diagnosed as being Aspie, that really helped, I think, both of us because we then understood why we had such differences. But yeah, I would, um, yeah, I completely understand that. It's, maybe I should do one on marriage, but that might be really controversial. I do have different views on Aspies and marriage, though. <laughs> maybe I should do that. Okay, this is another MBTI one. This is from Eitelimen, I think. This is from 13 days ago, so I'm getting near the end now. INTP, uh, oh, INTP AIM, whom is being reviewed for uh, cyclothemia, bipolar 3, and mild Asperger's. It's funny when people say mild, not you saying it, but when a professional says it, because my understanding of Asperger's is it's binary, you either are or you're not. And then the spectrum for Asperger's is to do with what your various traits are and what affects you. It's not a case of you're more or less Asperger's than somebody else. I like MBTI as it can launch a person's interest into Jungian psychology and give you a generalized overview. Obviously, you can then start to deep dive into Jung's work and apply his work. Still, it's a bit of a giggle and interesting to note that many NT types are also on the ASD. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It is interesting. It is a, it is a springboard. I have i don't remember the details about Jung now, but I know I've looked into it. I know some of his thoughts and beliefs are very controversial. And some people would completely rubbish a lot of what he says, which is is fine. It's like a lot of things in life. It's useful as a generalization. Autistic. Oh, gosh, this is the last comment now. Autistic burnout. This is from Joanne Basquet. I agree with most of what you said. I feel like this too when burning out. I kind of disassociate, but not consciously. I'm burnt out at the moment. I'm sorry to hear that. Working on a complex appeal for over six months. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? The trouble with being burnt out is you can start to go down that way. And my response to it is I just push harder. I push myself harder. And that's completely the wrong thing to do. Something that helps me, and I said to some people at work, if something goes wrong or something's late or they're clearly stressed about something, my comment is, well, how many kittens died? Because I, I said earlier, I like cats. How many kittens died? And it's like, well, didn't actually kill any kittens. It's like, okay, well... Let's keep this in perspective then. This project's late. It might cost some money, might this and the other, but no kittens actually died from it. It's not like a big major disaster. That Obviously, there could be consequences. But so the reason I'm saying that is if in a work context, you're feeling burnt out and this deadline's going to get missed, you just let the person it affects know it's not going to be on time. And they will then need to change their plans to allow for it. They may say unkind words to you, but doesn't change the reality. You've got to look after your health. You're not going to be on your deathbed thinking, oh, I'd wish I pushed myself harder at work. I hope you won't. Anyway, it depends. Maybe if you're an airline pilot and you aren't concentrating and then you crash the plane and then you're dying, then you might think you worked harder, you pushed yourself harder and you didn't crash the plane. But hopefully you know what I'm kind of saying. All right, well, that was interesting. I'm, it was interesting for me anyway. I will edit some of this out, so I'll be jumping around a bit on the screen. Um, I will reply textually to these comments as I go through them and I will try and upload this video today. 
And I'm sorry I'm not putting more videos out. I do need to do more videos. Hopefully, if I get into the routine of the Fantasy Football League of like putting out a little tiny video every week to do the football on a different channel, don't worry, I won't pollute this, I'll be able to get back to the routine and put a few more of these out. And this is probably going to be my longest video, so sorry about that. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend.